The story began with a tranquil night in a North African tribe, circa 8000 BC. The calm was shattered when a mysterious object resembling the Egyptian pyramids descended from the heavens, startling the tribe awake. While fear gripped the community, one young man stood apart, driven by curiosity rather than dread. As he approached the enigmatic object, a radiant beam of light enveloped his body, marking him in the eerie glow. Then, the story switched to 1928 at Giza, Egypt, where an incredible discovery occurred. During excavations led by archaeologist Professor Paul Langford and his daughter Catherine, a remarkable find emerged, a massive metallic ring alongside an ancient fossil bearing the likeness of the deity Anubis, adorned with intricate Egyptian hieroglyphs. This discovery became the focus of extensive examination by a clandestine military organization. Faced with the challenge of deciphering the hieroglyphs, Catherine sought assistance from Daniel Jackson, an esteemed Egyptologist. At a seminar, Daniel revealed a controversial theory about ancient Egyptian civilization, stating that the pharaohs of the fourth dynasty did not build the Great Pyramid. This theory was supported by the structure inside the pyramid, which was so extraordinary that it was hard to believe that an ordinary man had designed it. This uncertainty led some participants to leave the seminar, disappointed that Daniel could not provide a concrete answer as to who actually built the Great Pyramid of Giza. Exiting the venue, Daniel was approached by an officer who urged him to meet Catherine. Catherine showed Daniel a photo of his adoptive parents, who were scientists, hoping that Daniel could help translate the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics on his father's discovery ring. Despite initial reluctance, Daniel, grappling with financial hardship, relented and agreed to assist Catherine in her quest for understanding. The next day, Daniel arrived at a military installation in Colorado, where he was introduced to a service member named Charles Kowalski. They went to a room where Egyptian inscriptions were being researched. Daniel attempted to translate the hieroglyphic letters, and the result surprised the researchers. The giant ring they were studying was a stargate which used constellations as spatial coordinates. Daniel's astonishment increased when he realized the military's intense interest in the ancient inscription, which was not their field. Then, Colonel Jack O'Neill suddenly appeared and announced his project leadership, replacing Catherine. With an air of authority, Jack emphasized the need for utmost secrecy, forbidding any civilian involvement. After two weeks of meticulous work, Daniel finally decoded all the symbols inscribed on the ancient artifact. During the presentation, Daniel explained that among the symbols were representations of constellations arranged in sequence. He would form the image of a pyramid emitting rays toward the stars, surrounded by worshippers. Daniel's explanation diverged from conventional wisdom, so General West decided to show Daniel what they had found, a giant ring known as the Stargate. By matching all the symbols described by Daniel, the Stargate was finally activated. Suddenly, from the giant ring emerged a whirlpool that slowly faded away, leaving the ring as a pool of water. The transformation left the entire room in awe, tinged with an undercurrent of trepidation at the unknown dangers lurking beyond the threshold. General West ordered a robot explorer to be sent as an experiment. The robot could be remotely controlled and equipped with cameras and GPS to track its whereabouts. As the robot began to enter the Stargate, something suddenly caught its eye, and the team tried to locate it. To their astonishment, the robot's signal emanated from a distant realm, the uncharted terrain of Abydos, nestled within a foreign cosmos. Shortly afterward, they received information from a satellite in the form of a photo showing symbols that could be the exit of the Stargate. In addition, the robot explorer also managed to detect the planet's conditions, where the air content and gravity were similar to those on Earth, signaling the possibility of life there. Daniel quickly expressed his desire to be on the team traveling with Colonel Jack. Daniel became part of Jack's team, which also included Riley, Poro, Freeman, Brown, Ferretti, and Kowalski. With thorough preparations including Daniel being entrusted with Catherine's necklace as a symbol of luck, they embarked on their journey. Guided by Colonel Jack, they entered the Stargate. When all seven chevrons were locked in, a wormhole opened, connecting the Stargate with a distant planet. After exiting the Stargate, they began examining their surroundings and realized they were inside a pyramid. It proved that Daniel's theory about constructing the Great Pyramid of Giza was correct. With their surroundings established, Jack's team readied their equipment and requested Daniel to initiate the process to activate the Stargate and facilitate their return to Earth. However, Daniel faced obstacles because the symbols on the planet Stargate differ from those on Earth. It took Daniel some time to find the inscriptions around the pyramid. The team was frustrated and accused Daniel of lying. Finally, Jack decided to build a base camp. After the base camp was completed, Daniel found an alien creature that appeared to be a pet. Suddenly, Jack appeared and panicked the creature into running away without realizing that Daniel was caught in its harness and dragged along. 
Jack, Kowalski, and Brown followed and they discovered a tribe of humans working to mine a strange mineral. They found a settlement of people who turned out to be humans. Daniel tried to communicate with them, but they bowed down after seeing Daniel's necklace, perhaps considering him a divine messenger of their god Ra, due to an amulet given to him by Catherine. One of the young men from the tribe called their leader to meet Daniel, but unfortunately, they did not understand the language spoken by the tribal chief. According to Daniel's explanation, the language used by the locals was similar of ancient Egyptian. After being pleased with the chocolate provided by Daniel, Kasuf, the local chief, invited Daniel to follow them. Arriving at the settlement, Daniel saw a large monument carved with the symbol of Ra, the sun god in ancient Egyptian belief. Suddenly, they heard a siren, and the villagers rushed to close the gates. Jack and his team feared they were trapped, but the chief, Kasuf, and Skura tried to calm them down and explained that the gates were closed due to an impending sandstorm. That night, Daniel and Jack retreated to dinner. They were served with an unusual dish, an animal with hard skin similar to a pangolin. At first, Jack and his team were surprised and hesitant to taste the food. However, after Daniel tried it, they realized it tasted like ordinary chicken meat. Then, Daniel tried to ask about the symbol by writing it on the sand. However, Kasuf quickly erased the writing, pointing out that writing was forbidden in their cultural customs. Later, the tribe's chieftain Kasuf presented Jackson with his daughter Shira as a gift. Daniel used this opportunity to find information about the symbol he sought, which Shira knew. Without hesitation, Daniel immediately asked her to go there. Meanwhile, due to a sandstorm, the few remaining members of the exploration team at base camp decided to take shelter inside the pyramid. When they tried to report their condition, the whole pyramid suddenly shook like something had landed on it. They immediately set out to investigate what happened. However, unexpectedly, a mysterious creature appeared, paralyzing them individually. It was Ra's ship landed atop the pyramid structure. The beast resembled the god Anubis in ancient Egyptian belief. They captured Ferretti and Freeman while killing Poro and Rayleigh. Daniel and Sheer have returned to their destination. After learning it, Daniel understood the ancient Egyptian language spoken by the planet's inhabitants or Abydos. When Shire explained the hieroglyphs on the wall, Jack suddenly approached them. Daniel explained to Jack all the symbols that have been translated, revealing the history that occurred on planet Abydos. Millions of years ago, the planet ruled by Ra faced devastation, compelling him to embark on a cosmic odyssey in search of a new home. He wished to extend his life by entering the body of another being. With his advanced technology, Ra claimed to be a god and created the Stargate to transport humans to Abydos as his slaves. Centuries passed, and the enslaved humans, fueled by defiance, rose up against their oppressor. They waged a desperate war, driving Ra's forces back and burying the Stargate to sever his reach. However, remnants of humanity remained enslaved on the distant planet of Abydos. Ra was afraid that one day, if the Stargate on Earth was reopened, the humans in the Abydos player would also rebel and return to Earth, which was their hometown. To avoid that, Ra banned reading and writing for humans on the planet so that the descendants of the Abydos tribe would not know the history of their ancestors' rebellion. Later, Charles came with the news that he had managed to find the Stargate symbols that the ancestors of the Abydos tribe had hidden. They hoped that one day the Stargate on Earth would open again. Daniel tried to read the symbols, but unfortunately, one symbol had faded. Without the seventh symbol, the Stargate on the planet Abydos would not be able to be activated. Jack decided to return to the pyramid and search for the final symbol. When they arrived at the pyramid, they were shocked by the pyramid's transformation into a spaceship. Jack asked all team members to be alert, worried that Ra may have returned and some of his team may have been captured. They began to infiltrate the ship. Once they arrived inside, they were attacked by a creature in the form of the god Horus. Jack's team members were taken down one by one using a staff that could shoot laser beams. Luckily, Jack and Daniel managed to escape to the Stargate room, but they found that an object that Jack had installed was no longer there. Plus, the appearance of Lord Anubis forced them to surrender. Then Jack and Daniel were taken to a throne hall, where they would face Lord Grey. Shortly after that, Ray appeared behind the dais and presented a bomb found by his troops in the Stargate room. The gods then showed their true faces, which turned out to be human. Knowing this, Jack immediately grabbed Anubis' weapon and shot one of the Horus. However, once again, they were forced to surrender because Daniel was shot while trying to protect Jack, and this time, Jack was locked up in prison along with Kowalski and other members. Meanwhile, in the settlement, the Abydos tribespeople were attacked by an airplane driven by Horus. The attack was a punishment for them for accepting Daniel and his friends. Back to Daniel, he suddenly woke up in a room where there was a medical chest. A small child approached him and took him to see the god Ra. 
Rai explained that his interest in humans was because the human body was effortless to heal. She also revealed his plan to take revenge on humanity by sending a bomb brought by Jack. However, Ra planned to modify the bomb with minerals from Avidos to increase its power. Before that, Ra would force Daniel to execute his friends to show her power to the Abidos tribe as the god of the sun. The following day, Ra held a ceremony to execute Jack and his troops. Enslaved people from the planet Abidos also attended the ceremony. As planned, Daniel was asked to be the executor. Of course, Daniel was forced to do so because he was threatened with death if he refused. However, at the last moment, Skara gave a code using the reflection of sunlight. Daniel realized the code and immediately pointed his staff at Ra, shooting him and foiling his evil plan. It was unfortunate that the laser beam only hit Ra's throne. Skara then began firing his weapons to disperse the slaves and led Jack and his army to escape. In the evening, they gathered with the Abidos tribe. Jack explained that General West ordered him to destroy the Stargate on the planet Abydos because its capabilities could spell disaster for humanity on Earth. Humanity would never know what would emerge from the Stargate if kept open. Jack deliberately did not tell his troops this because, in fact, all of them, including Daniel, would return to Earth, while Jack would stay behind to activate the bomb. It could be said that this was a suicide mission for Jack because his part had no more reason to live after the death of his son. When Jack got the invitation to join the Stargate mission, he was considering committing suicide. However, he got an honorable offer to join the mission, he finally decided to do a deed that was considered honorable for his country. The next day, Daniel saw Skara writing down a symbol depicting the day of victory for the slaves. Daniel realized it was the seventh symbol they had been looking for to open the Stargate. Meanwhile, Ray carried out his plan to destroy Earth. Therefore, he ordered all slaves to deliver mineral products to the pyramid to be fitted with bombs. It was Jack and his troops who used this to sneak into the pyramid. Before enacting their plan, Jack and Daniel knew they had to shatter the illusion that held the Abidos tribe captive in fear and blind devotion. With resolve etched upon their faces, they embarked on a mission to unveil the truth hidden beneath layers of deception. Once thriving, they headed straight to the pyramid disguised as enslaved people. Their plan went smoothly after they entered. They immediately turned to some of Ra's troops. Unfortunately, when Kowalski tried to enter, Horus suddenly destroyed the entrance and they were stuck outside. Ra immediately sent his air force to attack the Abydos tribe, which was still outside. In a moment fraught with tension, Jack and Daniel, accompanied by Shire, pressed on toward the Stargate, went straight to the Stargate to activate it with a bomb that would be used to destroy the gate. However, suddenly, one of the Horus appeared and shot Shire until she was killed. After Daniel managed to get rid of the Horus, his gaze fell upon the teleportation gate Anubis used. Without hesitation, Daniel used the gate to get to Ra's room. He intended to cure Shire by using a medical pot, a tool that Rai used to extend his life. Daniel placed Shagra in a regeneration device and she recovered, but Rai discovered them and attempted to kill Jackson. Meanwhile, Anubis arrived at the Stargate room and tried to thwart Jack's plan to blow up the gate. There was a fierce battle between them, where both were the best warriors in their world. However, it seemed that Anubis had gained power from Ra, so Jack had to use his ingenuity to defeat him. After some fisticuffs, Jack finally knocked Anubis down near the teleportation gate and only sent his head to Ra's room. Jack activated the teleportation system, allowing Jackson and Shagger to escape the ship. As the rebellion outside the pyramid reached its peak, Kowalski and the Apidos warriors found themselves bolstered by the support of the formerly enslaved people, united in their shared resolve to overthrow the shackles of oppression. Together, they stood as a formidable force against Ra's tyranny, their spirits unyielding in the face of adversity. Witnessing the uprising unfolding before him, Ra felt a sense of déjà vu, a haunting echo of past rebellions. Faced with the specter of history repeating itself, Ra made a fateful decision to abandon the planet Abahedos. His departure was signaling a newfound hope for freedom and liberation for its inhabitants. With time ticking away and the threat of Ra's modified bomb looming large, Jack and Daniel knew they had to act swiftly. Unable to deactivate the bomb, they devised a daring plan to send it hurtling towards Ra's spaceship using the teleportation device. On Abydos, the inhabitants watched in awe as the explosion lit up the heavens, a beacon of hope signaling their newfound freedom from the clutches of slavery. Cheers erupted throughout the land, echoing across the vast expanse of desert as they celebrated their hard-won victory and the promise of a brighter future. As the dust settled and the echoes of victory faded into the desert sands, the team faced a bittersweet farewell. 
With the humans liberated and Ra's threat extinguished, Jack, Kowalski, and Ferretti prepared to return to Earth, their mission accomplished but their hearts heavy with the weight of what was left behind. Meanwhile, Daniel made a decision that would alter the course of his life forever. With a sense of purpose and a newfound love in his heart, he chose to remain on Apigos, embracing a future intertwined with Shire and the Avidonian people. Daniel entrusted Jack with Catherine's necklace, a token of luck and friendship to carry with him on his journey back to Earth. As Jack bid farewell to his dear friend, promising to return one day, he couldn't help but feel a twinge of sadness mixed with hope. For in the vast expanse of the universe, amidst the stars and galaxies, their paths may diverge, but their bond would endure, a beacon of light in the darkness guiding them home. So, what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below, and if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you in the next video.